we begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. Our flag, our flag has disappeared. <laughs> so we're gonna we're gonna imagine it in that corner. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America, America to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We have an official roll call. Um, uh, Mr. Laguna? Present. Uh, Commissioner Rodriguez? Present. Commissioner Block? Present. Commissioner Laguna? Present. And uh, Commissioner Mena is absent. Um, so public comment is reserved for all persons wishing to address the commission. And any talks related uh, issues that are not otherwise on this agenda. And uh, since we have a uh, member of the public here, and I saw him submit a, a speaker's request, is it for public comment or is it for this, uh, addressing a specific item that's on the agenda? Uh, it's for item 7.2. So. Okay. And so are there any any other members of the public on the online that may want to do uh, a you want to speak and if so could we tell them what condition what the requirements are yeah uh, it looks like we have one hand raised on zoom for public comment so uh, for public comment uh spoken public comments will be accepted during the meeting in person or remotely through zoom public comments in person will be taken first followed by speakers on zoom you'll be called on by name to speak when it's your turn if you wish to speak to the commission, please fill out a speaker slip located near the conference room door. If you have anything that you wish distributed to the commission and included in the official record, please hand it to the staff person for the parks department who will distribute the information to the commission members and staff. For speakers on Zoom, please use the raise hand function to indicate you would like to speak for an item. When the chair calls on public comment, click raise hand. Speakers will be notified shortly before they are called to speak. You'll be provided the ability to unmute your microphone and begin speaking. Uh, public comment is limited to two minutes. And so uh, we do have one hand raised for Burnett Silvera. Um, Burnett, you should be able to unmute. So it's something unrelated to what's on the agenda. Correct. Go ahead and start. Or... Uh, yes, one second. Sorry, I'm trying to find the window for the uh, timer. Uh, there you go, Burnett. Okay, Burnett Severa El Granada. At your June meeting, the parks director stated his department would not be taking action within Quarry Park to address the flooding stormwater problem because the stormwater was following its natural drainage course. We, the neighbors to Quarry Park, in a recent email to you with supporting photos, questioned that characterization. There are two stormwater runoff flows that flood from the park. The first is from an erosion controlled drainage ditch located behind the park's parking lot. How flooding stormwater runoff from a man made and directed erosion controlled drainage ditch can be called following its natural drainage course is beyond reason. It simply is. The second stormwater runoff flow just north of the first is primarily the result of spillway runoff diverted around the earthen dam to protect it from overflow washouts. However, before exiting the park, erosion control efforts direct additional stormwater to merge with the spillway runoff. These merged and directed stormwaters are then collected at different locations below the dam and left to flood from the park. Again, characterizing such stormwater flow as following its natural drainage course is unfounded since merged spillway and erosion control storm stormwater is manually directed at different locations as it floods into the adjacent community. Claiming flooding stormwater from Quarry Park is just following its natural drainage course is not supported by the facts. Please review our email with its attached photos, then judge for yourself if stormwater in Quarry Park is simply following its natural drainage course. We also ask that you review the park's approved 2022 master plan and note it contains 74 planned erosion improvements that it dump even more stormwater, flooding stormwater into our community. 
Would this increased flooding also be framed as following its natural drainage course? We thank you and continue to seek your help to solve Quarry Park's dangerous runoff problem. Thank you, Burnett. Thank you. And that uh, is all we have for raised hands here. Please note it. We're not always in a continued discussion on it. And thank you for, uh, you know, bringing it up again. Um, action to set the agenda. Did I get a motion to set the agenda? Yeah, I'd like to make a motion to set the agenda. I have a second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, move on to the second, I mean, the fifth, the fifth item of the agenda, uh, Parks Foundation report. And Michelle, you know, we've been missing this report, so we're looking forward to it. Okay, good. I have four things that I would like to update all of you on. Um, the first is uh, we had Coyote Point Summerfest. I think it was August 10th, and I believe there were something like 2,000 people. I you know I saw some of you there that came through that day, um, and I just really want to give a shout out to the Parks Department's interpretive team for putting on a really great event. The whole thing just was so smooth. All the tables were set up. It was really well run. And there's gonna be a fall fest at Quarry Park on October 12th. Um, so we look forward to being a part of that also. So there's food trucks and um, different activities and a lot of resource tables at these events. Um, the Parks Foundation is, um, we are bringing our jury together next week to review our top six finalists for our next round of posters. So we are selecting artists to design a poster for Wonderlick Park, Sawyer Camp Trail, and San Pedro Valley. So that decision will be made in the next two weeks. And then hopefully at the end of the year, we'll have new posters to unveil for everybody. Um, for those of you who met Adriana, who was the program coordinator for the Parks Foundation. She has moved on to work at El Concilio in San Mateo County. And we have just, um, we are hiring a new program coordinator, Christina, who actually was the very first bilingual parks intern at Friendship Park. So she's coming full circle, coming back, to, well, coming back to parks, but working for the Parks Foundation. She'll start next week. So we're very excited about that. Um, and the foundation will be making a gift to the county this month. And one of the things included in there is the $40,000 to nominate Sam McDonald Park to the National Register of Historic Places. Um, so that I think that process has already begun, but we'll release the money this month um, in addition to some other things. But those were the highlights I wanted to share with all of you. Happy to answer any questions. How many uh, finalists do you have in each category for the posters? Well, we are we are picking three, so we invite our top six. I got you. Yeah, okay. but we had twenty nine. Fantastic. Yeah. Can we talk a little bit more about the Sun McDonald <laughs> and the effort. So basically, and, and what the forty thousand dollar donation? Believe it. Oh goes towards bringing on historian to do all of the research research to put the package together for the National Register of Historic Places. And then it automatically gets included at the State Historic Commission. And then it opens up the opportunity to interpret, um, in particular, Sam's Cabin um, at Sam McDonald Park um, and doing a bunch of other things. But I know Hannah and Sam were the ones to approach the foundation about this a year ago. So I don't know, Hannah, if you wanted to add anything else to that. Yeah, ultimately the funding is helping um, for the cost for this historian to really um, do a full um, accounting of the condition of the house and as well as um, sort of a historic records search and uh, write up for the building and for um, uh, the submittal that would go to the um, historic register. And so um, that's the funding portion of it. Um, and then essentially we would end up with a, a completed um, application with all of the details that the National Historic Registry needs to, um, you know, adopt it as a historic site. Uh, hopefully the historian that uh, gets hired is going to uh, contact the family 
I think uh, my niece uh, visited the park a couple of years ago and uh, was really surprised that it was called Sam because uh, that, that wasn't his name. Uh, his name was Emmanuel. So it says he, he, he was Uncle Manny. I mean, who is Sam? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, and apparently, apparently, that's a nickname that he got when he got hired at Stanford. And uh, for some reason, the supervisor didn't uh, say Emmanuel. It's called, started calling him Sam. And uh, the name just stuck, stuck. So it would be interesting what, what his official official ID name was. And, and if it's not Sam McDonald, uh, it would be interesting if we could even consider you know, changing the name of the park to the same name. To, um, just so you know, I believe the family is involved. Uh, Sam has also, Sam Herzberg has also been in court, uh, contact with Jacqueline Larson, who is working, who just finished a children's book about Sam McDonald. Mm -hmm. And she's also been in touch with the family. So I do yeah. believe everyone is looped in together. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, any other questions or comments? You know, there being none, could we go to the departmental update? Um, um, a public comment for Actually, uh, I almost forget that. Uh, any, any public comment for the Parks Foundation? Uh, no um, speaker slips, and I uh, do not see any hands raised. In so then we could proceed on to the departmental update. Yeah, uh, so, um, you know, the written update is provided in the packet, um, but a few big updates, um, or ongoing updates really, are just the progress on um, some of our capital projects, uh, Flood and Tinnitus in particular, um, two really big projects going on concurrently. Uh, so for Flood Park, I know the, um, the last uh, commission meeting involved a visit to the park and um, you all got to see the progress that was going on there. Um, the goal for uh, that project is for um, most of the uh, sports uh, courts and the small multi-use field to be completed in November and be able to be open to the public before Thanksgiving. And then uh, early, in early 2025 would um, uh, have the completion of the picnic sites and reservation areas and other um, walking paths and landscaping. So there'll be a partial opening of some of the facilities um, this fall, and then uh, the remaining work that's more on the Western segment would be completed in um, the early part of next year. Um, and that's for you know the current phase one of Realized Sled Park. Um, and then what's uh, also happening along Side that is work on the design for the playground that will go in. And so right now um, we're at about 30% design for that. Uh, some of the concepts um, that were selected for the playground are included in the attachments, um, but uh, the department will, um, with that concept um, information, the, you know, where we're at with the design, start to work with the, um, uh, the con the consultant uh, to actually select the equipment um, that we'll want to put in and uh, have, get the designs further along. And then uh, Tinnitus is um, still uh, uh, underway. Um, the goal is to um, open the park by December or January. Uh, we're having a little bit of um, unknown around that date, just depending on how weather goes this fall, because um, significant rains could just add some delay to uh, the work that the contractor can do. But um, at this point, all the rough grading is completed. Um, the ranger station and the restroom are being constructed. And then uh, the rest of the hardscape should be completed in, in October. Um, so then after that would be um, the handrails, uh, guardrails, and landscaping. So. Is the plan still for us to meet next month? At That's or, my understanding. Is that right. still the plan? Um, I believe um, that's really all um, 
the updates that I have for the department update. Uh, if there's any questions. Um, I, I had one follow up on on Tanita's. I was actually shocked to see that Decep that there's a chance that this thing could go out in December because I know in the past for other projects the there's a halt when the weather changes and a lot of times it's like right after October. So I I wasn't sure is it because the grading got done in yeah. the during this okay because yeah. I was I was wondering so it's it's not going to be any of the grading type work because I know that is a, a treacherous. Uh, uh, project at least at least certain parts of it kind of making sure you get uh, all, all the way down to the beach yeah so for the most part the um the fact that the, the grading work is mostly complete is um what will allow work to continue past that okay. sort of october deadline if we do still get some significant storm weather you know the site conditions just might not yeah. be conducive to other work um especially if there's um you know paving or other like or you know um curing that needs to happen you know that's not um you know we would want to dry ditches or you know stretch of dry weather for that work uh to happen as well but um for the most part that october date is um mostly uh uh kind of a hard stop when it comes to that initial grading ground disturbance so Uh, so the coyote point, coyote point recreation area, mm -hmm. and the two, the two alternative council plans that are currently being presented to the public. You know, we just need to underline the fact that the uh, survey closes in September the eighth, and I didn't get a chance to click on that survey, but I did. Say earlier summary of the data collected. You know, today, so there are essentially two options here, an ecology for the alternative and an activity for the alternative. Is there any, from, uh, from the department's professional perspective, uh, any leaning towards one or the other, or are we leaving this to the public to, um, you know, to give direction as to you know, where the meaning is. Yeah, I mean, I certainly think that, um, you know, the direction we take would be heavily um, guided by the public feedback that uh, we receive on this. You know, we want to be providing the amenities and the experience for the park that, um, you know, users are um, communicating to us. Uh, I think you'll find though, with the way the survey um, lays it out, if you, um, have a chance, the park is kind of divided into zones. And so there are options to kind of say that, you know, um, say like the beach zone, maybe you prefer more of the um, uh, activity forward features in that zone, but uh, more of the sort of ecology or trail focused um, amenities in another zone. So it could um, ultimately end up being a blend of some of these concepts, depending on which area of the park we're looking at. So um, that's, you know, another factor to, that the survey takes into account. So, um, you know, there's a, a way of kind of taking um, parts of the two concepts and thinking about like which areas of the park um, people are looking for those types of amenities. So. And to the chair real quick, I know we got the link in the packet. I don't know if the pub, so is that, is the, is that survey, which I think is due to close in three days here, that's on the, the parks website? It is. Okay. Great. Do you, do you have a sense as to what the responses were about? You got a lot of people uh, taking the survey or? Uh, that I'm not sure. Um, I would have to check with Carla to see what how many responses they've received to date, but that's not something I, um, I know currently. Okay, any other comments? Uh, General comment to say it's, I agree with the, with the Tunitas uh, timeline, it's impressive um, to think of as a, that's a large scale project, so. Kudos to the department for moving along and yeah. integrating that when it needs to get done. Yeah. We'll be excited to see it. Yeah, definitely. 
I had one, actually one, one question about the Tanitas project, if it's okay. Um, in terms of public transport options to get to that particular park, is there, because I know there's a bus line that goes over like 92, um, is there gonna be any sort of way for people to get there with public transport? Um, I'm not aware of a bus route that um, would stop in the vicinity. Um, I know there have been sort of long-term um, uh, kind of efforts on connecting the coast side and, you know, expanding um, transit options along the coast. And um, we'd love to see, um, you know, more public transit connections. Um, and I think there's been other, you know, communications with other partner agencies too about, you know, shuttle routes, but those have been, um, uh, that you know, get people out to parks where there isn't transit um, connections. But you know, there's been mixed um, success with those in the past, and it's you know, challenging to to do. Yeah. Yeah. No, I don't certainly understand the challenge, but it's definitely gonna. Um, you know, when we think about our you know inclusivity and equity side of things, it's gonna favor those with cars and you know stuff like that um, to get access to it. So yeah. it's a good thing just to. You know, Think about it, or maybe um, you know, down the road, an interesting topic is just kind of reviewing all of our different parks and the accessibility. As, as excited as I am for Tanitas, you know, won't make it there. Yeah. So, uh, in terms of that, just to sort of dovetail, um, uh, are we doing any work with some trying? So they have planning throughout and, 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 and so on and so forth. And, and particularly their, you know, the implementation of certain specific shuttle services. I know there's, there's a shuttle service, for instance, in, within East Palo Alto. You can call in, they can pick you up, and then take you whatever it is that you went with is within a certain geographical area. So is there any exploration as to the possibility of? Uh, Eating a shuttle service or rerouting buses, you know, provide the public, you know, with access, right? With reasonable access, you know. And so, and if there isn't, if there isn't, then perhaps, you know, is there something that the department would be willing to transport out of the county? Um, I do not believe that there's any any department-led discussions with Sam Trans at this time um, around that, but uh, I do, um, you know, I would foresee that being something that we would be interested in, um, either within the county uh, or, uh, you know, with other departments uh, that would, you know, interface more with that sort of transit side of things. So. I'd like to make two additional comments. One on the San Bruno Mountain Day Youth Improvement Project. Romtech, Romtech. So this is a company uh, uh, from my old days being in parks and recreation. Uh, they actually build the structure in Las Vegas and then transport it and then install it. And, or, uh, or is I think it's installed sort of modularly. Um, yeah, so it's not like a fully assembled, um, you know, product, it but, but it comes, pieces. yeah. It so, um, but we do all the work to kind of select all of the fixtures and um, uh, finishes uh, in advance and then. And prepare the foundation. Yeah. Yeah. Rom Tech's entity that did the new restrooms and showers at Memorial Park. And on, uh, it was a good meeting on flood fault. We missed you. Yes. <laughs> sorry. It was a wonderful meeting. Sorry to miss that. Uh, ran, uh, memories about your old office <laughs> that you really cannot see because, you know, the place really has been, you know, turned upside down. But, uh, but uh, you know, just having discussions with people that are working on the project, it was a very eye-opening project. And, uh, uh, and very, very impressive in terms of the new structure. Yes. Yeah. Member of the public, we are today with us. 
uh, you know, you have got an opportunity to ask questions and, you know, do that. So I think, I think that's great. But, you know, it's, it still does raise a point for me that, you know, uh, uh, since we don't record whatever it is that we say, whatever it is that transpires, uh, so a commissioner that is not there does not really get an opportunity to get a sense of what happened. Or the members of the public that were not there don't really get a sense as to, you know, what to accomplish with me. So I think I would like for us to, at some point of the commission, visit how, how you know, some of these things can be recorded and made available to the public. You know, the, this brief summary is really, truly a summary and truly a capture. You know, really, what happened? I mean, given that, I'll open it to the public. Uh, if there are no other comments, uh, permission, uh, open it to the public for any comments. Uh, I have um, no speakers left to this item, but there is uh, one hand raised on Zoom for Brooks Esser. Uh, Brooks, you should uh, be able to unmute. Hi, this is Brooke Esser. I'm uh, <clears throat> I'm actually a member of the Sam Trans board, so I picked up on the comment with regard to the. Um, you can hear me, I'm assuming. Yes, yes we can. Oh, very good. Um, I'm picking up on the comment with regard to the Ride Plus service that was mentioned, um, that serves East Palo Alto primarily, but also Half Moon Bay and and El Granada. In fact, about thirty percent of the total number of trips. Um, provided by that service do serve the the coast side half moon bay and all granada and no we currently don't have routes that run south towards um towards tanitas creek it's something i can take back though because obviously the issue of equity is important to the board and that's something uh that i'll certainly keep in mind so thank you very much um, that is all for uh, public comment on. Great, great. Um, so uh, we go to uh, item number seven, which is the regular agenda. And we have an informational item regarding uh, uh, an update on the Parks Department fiscal year 2024-25. Budget to go. Who will be presenting that? That'll be me. Okay, uh, so today's presentation uh, will provide an update on the Parks Department's fiscal year 24 25 adopted budget. Um, and this will go to the Board of Supervisors for approval on September 24th. Uh, so this is for the current fiscal year, which uh, spans July 1st, 2024 to June 30th, 2025. So as a brief overview, the presentation will outline uh, the budget process for the county, including where we are currently in the budget cycle. Um, we'll discuss the department's budget changes for this fiscal year and the September revisions to the budget and this uh, summary of the 24-25 adopted budget, as well as an opportunity for questions. Uh, so this diagram has been shown for uh, budget presentations in the past uh, as an illustration to show how the county's two-year budget cycle works. Uh, and so as a reminder, um, our budget is established for a two-year time frame uh, with um, the proposed budget changes for year two being primarily minor adjustments rather than the more substantive bu budget requests that would occur during year one. Uh, so where the green star is on the top right, um, that is where this budget cycle begins in June of the first uh, year. And then where we are at is the orange star, which is um, the uh, um, September revisions and adoption of the budget for year two of the budget cycle. Um, and just for some information, which we'll go into more detail on, the September revisions really occur to reflect the completion of the county's year-end financial closing activities. And so the budget changes you see are kind of based off of the actuals that we know of at the end of the fiscal year. Um, 
And so September revisions often reflect an increase in the budget compared to what was in the recommended budget that was previously adopted in June, um, because we can now add back in more of the budget amounts um, once we have these uh, sort of actual um, uh, accounting completed. Um, so, uh, as shown uh, in the larger table on this slide, uh, there are department level budget changes from the recommended budget for uh, fiscal year 24 25. Um, and so, again, that was approved earlier this year in June. Um, and then the adopted budget uh, is what the Board of Supervisors will consider approving on September 24th. Um, and again, this adopted budget represents the second year of the two year budget and primarily make, uh, focuses on making adjustments that were not known uh, during the recommended budget earlier the, in the year. Um, and for us, this includes changes to several internal service charges, uh, salaries and benefits increases, rolling over funding for capital projects, uh, making fund balance adjustments, and adding new Measure K allocations. And so overall, the department's um, fiscal year 24-25 adopted budget is approximately 71.6 million. And then the smaller table at the bottom of the uh, slide, uh, this shows a breakdown of the adopted budget, and this is by our budget units. So we have four budget units that make up the Parks Department's budget. Um, and all of our uh, net county costs or um, the ongoing general fund support from the county, as well as most of the department's positions are in the uh, general fund portion of the budget, which is the parks and recreation unit, the 3900B. Um, and so uh, this has a total budget of about 30.7 million and includes 85 authorized positions. And then the Fish and Game, Cody Point Marina, and Parks Capital Project budget units are not part of the general fund. Uh, the Fish and Game Fund is a special revenue fund, and spending is restricted to activities found in the California Fish and Game Code. Uh, this budget is around $63,000. The Coyote Point Marina is an enterprise fund, and this means that it's operated and financed in a manner similar to a private business. And so it does not receive any financial support from the county. Um, the county Coyote Point Marina's budget is around 1.8 million and includes three authorized positions. And then the Parks Capital Projects Fund is about 39 uh, million and is uh, it's outside of the general fund, but it can receive one-time general fund dollars or other one-time funding for these capital projects. Um, and we'll review why there is an increase in the department's total sources, total requirements, and net county cost um, from the recommended budget to the adopted budget on the next slide. So before you do that, I got a question. Yeah. So the county adopts a two-year budget. So it was 20, 23, 24, and 20, 24, 25. So in the, in the projected two-year budget, uh, you know, column number two, and he says to total sources. Mm -hmm. The projection was that in this, in the second year, thirty-two million is going to be spent. Is that true? Is that am I understanding it correctly? Uh, so the recommended budget is um like it's omitting certain um information, and specifically like um things like capital um project. Uh, rollover because um, you know that's usually like a really big chunk of funding, but um, the uh, um, the recommended budget doesn't include that because we're still kind of in the process of using that funding, and so at the fiscal year end, we wait until that point in time to actually include those numbers in um, what would be the adopted budget. Uh, because we're still like in the process of spending that money, so it wouldn't be entirely accurate at the June time frame. And so it's we wait until the September revisions um, uh, portion and 
the you know approval of the adopted budget to put that funding back in and reflect it. So that's why you see such a difference. You know, in, you know, you know thank you for that extra information. But I mean, for me, then the question. Let me ask the question differently. Uh, a budget, a two-year budget was presented to the Board of Supervisors with some projected expenditures for certain. And we've gone through the first year. Mm -hmm. Now we are doing the revisions, you know, and definitely for the for the second and final year. So if you had to compare the total budget that is projected for that period, uh, given the fact that we have the actuals for the first year, uh, are we gonna stay on budget? Or, oh, yeah. or or are we is our budget gonna increase by quite, quite significantly? Um I mean, this um, change doesn't really reflect like us um, sort of miss uh, estimating or miss projecting anything. It's just um, uh, essentially the June time frame. You know, there are, are things that aren't accounted for yet until the closing of the fiscal year, and so it's not really like any gap in um, you know what we anticipated. Um, you know, it's just we're now able to account for. Um, you know, like the rollover of funding from one year to the next, changes in charge like service charges or um, new revenues, um, things like that. So yeah, the way the way I read it is these these two these two columns are apples and oranges, right? One one is with and one is without. Mm -hmm. um, it, it would be interesting to see the with and the with, or sorry the without and the without, right? To see if that changed, but. You said you were going to be going into some of that in the next slide. Yeah, just a bit more explanation of the right. September revisions yeah, and um, how uh, you know, kind of explaining that you know the difference in like the two numbers and why you see the um, total sources and requirements around twenty million, um, the net cutting cost increase to around one hundred thirty-five thousand as well. So the primary reason for these changes. From the previously approved recommended budget to the adopted budget is, you know, essentially these five bullet points. Um, so the department made um, adjustments to the fund balance to take into account those year-end actuals um, and other adjustments. So the net fund balance adjustments were about um, $447,000. And then there was significant rollover, um, which is really uh, typical during September revisions every year. So rollover for the capital projects and non-capital projects um, netted about 19.3 million. And then- That's the lion's yeah. share of it. That comes yeah. um, and then adjustments were also made to recognize new Measure K funding that uh, uh, we have in the amount of $400,000 in grant funding. Um, however, we're merely a, a pass-through um, for this funding, um, the, that funding is going to uh, RCD and Fire State Council. We're just helping facilitate um, them being able to receive that funding. Um, and then there are also adjustments to recognize um, other grants received for capital projects that total about $3.9 million. And uh, there are adjustments to salaries and benefits and then increases to internal service charges that amount to $137.5,000. So that's the net county cost um, figure that you saw on the table as well. Um, so yeah, um, a lot of it is accounted for in that rollover. Capital and so I'm sorry if I, I didn't get it then through the chair. So the new Measure K funding, right, that was because what the the uh, Board of Supervisors kind of added additional funding. Do, do you know how much extra that was of the? Uh, so the new Measure K funding was uh, 400,000. Okay, and that was it. just for like these two grants that were passed through for. Right, okay. um, it, was, it wasn't that, that we got a lot more uh, tax revenue and then. No. Okay. No. Okay. Thank you. Um, and then, so this, um, the next few slides will kind of break down our um, revenues, um, expenditures, and Measure K in a little bit more detail. So this uh, represents our revenue sources for 24-25. So um, as shown in the chart, about 33% of the department's total revenue is expected to come from other financing sources. And this includes um, one-time funding for capital projects from non-departmental services, or from the county's general fund. 
Um, a few projects that are funded from this revenue source include uh, Realized Flood Park at uh, 14 million, and the Tanese Creek Beach Improvement Project at uh, 1 million from this funding source. Uh, taxes is the next largest revenue source uh, and the budget at 31.3%. And this is equivalent to Measure K for the department. And so Measure K helps fund capital projects. Um, and this represents about 8.5 million of the total 15.3 uh, in this category. And then parks and operations, um, parks operations and maintenance related projects um, represent about 6.8 million of the total uh, tax revenue. Um, miscellaneous revenue is 13%, uh, and this includes about $4.9 million in grants and donations, um, including from the Peninsula Open Space Trust for the Tanese Creek Beach Project, and a $1.3 million grant from Santa Clara County for the Realized Flood Park Project. Uh, charges for services are about 8.4% of our total revenue. So this includes uh, the marina birth rentals, uh, which is about 1.5 million, uh, 1 1.2 million vehicle entrance fees, and 1.2 million in camping, picnic, special event, and reservation fees from and from annual pass sales. Uh, intergovernmental revenue um, is uh, close to 8%, and this includes uh, $2 million um, grant from the state for the Pescadero Community Plaza project, a uh, $1 million grant in federal funding from the Ma uh, for the Magic Mountain Playground replacement, and a, a $500,000 grant from the state for the Lenny State Historic Trail Markers project. So the, you mentioned the sand and fire on the town funding that we have Okay. Uh, why is that not in, in intergovernmental? Um, that I'm not sure um, why the categorization, um, categorization is different, you know, um, whether they're really just looking at state or federal funding for intergovernmental um, and then other sources falls under miscellaneous, uh, but I could um, check with Rolando and see. Why would something like that come to it's, I believe that that money came from Stanford from certain amounts that Stanford had to pay for as related to like development that they had done that got paid to Santa Clara. So it's sort of like in lieu funds, that kind of stuff. Okay. So I think that's where the money came from. And that's why, because it sort of affects land in the area of the flood park, I think that's why they were able to give that money to us as related to the flood park project. That's my recollection. Thanks. Um. And then, so lastly for this, um, other revenue is only about 6% of the revenue, and this includes um, about two and a half million in in-lieu fees for capital projects as well. Um, so um, these are funds from similarly, but different to the uh, Stanford funding, but um, other like development related in-lieu fees that the permit uses and can go towards parking permit projects. Um, so for our, um, gross appropriations, uh, this chart, um, depicts that. So other financing uses represents, uh, represents about 37.3% of total gross appropriations, um, or in other words, you know what? we plan to spend this fiscal year. Uh, other financing uses primarily includes our appropriations for capital projects and projects that are managed by the Department of Public Works. And this includes Flood Park, uh, which is about 10 million, Tanese Creek Beach Improvement Project at 11 million, and Parkwide Paving, um, which is 1 million. Uh, salaries and benefits are uh, um, plus 24% of all expected ex expenditures. And this includes uh, 15.9 million in our parks and recreation budget unit, and then 755,000 in the Coyote Point Marina budget unit. Uh, services and supplies is uh, around 18% of gross appropriations, and this covers 
uh, non-personnel costs needed to operate and maintain the county parks. So this includes um, projects and contracts for things like fire fuel reduction or tree removal services or other maintenance uh, work. Uh, fixed assets represents 15.7% of all planned expenditures. Fixed assets include um, certain appropriations for capital projects and large equipment purchases. Uh, the Coyote Point Park Modernization Project at $3.5 million makes up most of this category. And then the remaining amount is for Tanese Creek Beach and Realized Flood Park as the Parks Department will manage some aspects of these projects um, outside of um, what's being managed by Public Works. Uh, finally, other charges um, represent uh, close to 5% of the appropriations, and this includes property taxes and then service charges that the department pays for other county departments like HR, um, our fleet, and our IT charges. Um, for Measure K, um, the department's total, total Measure K allocations are about 15.3 million. Uh, based on the Measure K allocations, about 55.5% are allocated for capital projects. Uh, this includes Chinese Creek Beach at 4.4 million, Coyote Point Park Modernization Project at 1.8 million. Um, and then 24% of Measure K is for operations and maintenance. And so examples of the funding for this, um, the expenditures for this include uh, general maintenance projects, tree removal services, repairs, equipment purchases, and trail maintenance. Um, and then beginning in fiscal year 21-22, the Board of Supervisors has um, allocated a, a $1 million uh, annual fund to the Parks Department to um, help implement the adopted County Parks Wildfire Fuel Management Program. And so the Department received an additional $1 million for this fire mitigation work this fiscal year. Uh, and so that represents um, about 13% of all Measure K allocations. Uh, the Natural Resource Management Division, um, which also assists with some of the fire fuel reduction work and invasive species treatment efforts, um, represents about 3% of the Measure K allocations. And then the Parks Visitor Services Initiative, which includes the volunteer program and the interpretive division totals about 1.3%. Uh, of Measure K allocations, uh, but I should note that there are additional funds, including for their positions for that division, for both the interpretive and volunteer program that are in the general fund portion of the department's budget, and the total for this um, is close to one million for the program overall. Um, uh, overall, Measure K funding is used to improve the visitor experience, uh, protect and steward natural resources place antiquated facilities and equipment, remove hazardous trees, reduce fire fuels, improve playgrounds and picnic sites, place aged culverts, and perform maintenance on trails and county parks. Um, and then uh, the um, fiscal year 24-25 adopted budgets capital program is approximately uh, $37.7 And so during the September revisions process, the department can then account for the rollover of capital project appropriations as, you know, again, this is a, the point at which um, counties determined what had been spent for the prior fiscal year. Um, and so this also helps explain why the department has a much larger um, capital projects program during the adopted budget than during the recommended budget. And then um, uh, the largest, I'm not sure if you can see with that. Um, uh, the largest capital project in terms of available funding is uh, Real Asset Blood Park, um, which is a total $17.1 million project followed by the Tanitas Creek Beach Improvement Project, which is a total $11 million uh, project, and then the Coyote Point Park Modernization Project, which is $3.5 million. And with that, um, I'm happy to answer questions.
from the commission. Through the chair, um, in terms of staffing, the 88 staff positions from, um, is that a net, any net increase or are there projected increase or a decrease? How are we doing on staffing? Um, so we, uh, in this budget cycle did, um, uh, request and receive um, additional positions. Um, we had uh, two Ranger three positions, um, I believe six um, Ranger two positions, a natural resource specialist position, and an executive secretary. And so it was an increase to, I think it was 75 authorized positions. So lots of numbers and thanks for walking us through that. So the general read on the health of the budget is good side goes down. Um so um certainly um you know we are still in a good position with the um capital projects that we've begun and have underway um, and, uh, you know, have, um, you know, especially like those really big um, projects flood and need us um, that we, you know, project to be completed this fiscal year, um, you know, having that funding, um, you know, it, we're in good shape to have those completed. Um, I think the general um, temperature around, um, you know, long-term, you know, budget planning though is, you know, that there is uncertainty with um, just the um, kind of whether or not there may be a recession or just changes in, um, uh, you know, tax revenues um, or income um, that the county may receive. Um, and so, um, you know, I think for future budgets, we um, may just have different um, uh, considerations to make in terms of, you know, um, what to expect for future allocations, like, you know, these large projects like flood or tinnitus um, are likely, you know, uh, these, this is the time this will happen kind of thing, yeah. you know. All right, thank you. And so uh, when is when does measure three go back to work? Uh I, I can't recall. So that that'll be a major impact on our budget. And so it's yeah. edited until 2043. Yeah. We got some time, is what you're saying. Okay. <laughs> 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 uh, um, mission, if there are no other comments, we can open it for public comment. Um, I have no speaker slips for this item. <clears throat> And I currently do not see any hands raised for a public comment. So, 7.2? Yeah, yeah, we are still in 7.1. 7 7 so, there being no public comment, uh, I think that gives us permission to move to the next item. And uh, could we go to 7.2, an overview of the fish and game propagation fund, fund grant application received and uh, what the next steps are going to be. And this too is an informational item. Uh, so there's a brief um, a memo included in the agenda for this item. Um, so, um, the call for applications was posted to the website. We also did um, other outreach, um, including it in our newsletter and emailing, um, you know, the notice out to partner organizations who 
uh, may have some interest or um, uh, eligibility um, related to applying for the funds. And so this was open for a month uh, and closed on the 22nd of August. Uh, five applications were received, and this includes um, an application from San Bruno Mountain Watch uh, for um, rare, threatened, and endangered plant propagation, um, the San Mateo Resource Conservation District for a salmon uh, pit tag antenna array. So um, this has to do with um, being able to track tagged salmon that may move up and down uh, Death Piscadero Creek. Um, the San Mateo County Parks Foundation for Memorial Park, uh, Vita Verde for um, a nature education program, and Steve Kennedy um, for the Cannonball Express Elementary School version. Um, the requests ranged from uh, 5,000 to uh, over 22,000 um, in requests for funding. And so the next steps will be that um, the evaluation committee, um, which includes uh, Commissioner Rodriguez Mitten, myself, and Director Calderon, um, to meet and review all of the applications for um, completeness, but also um, their, you know, overall request, uh, how it um, uh, meets the requirements for this uh, grant and uh, then a recommendation um, would be provided to the commission at a, a future commission meeting for your consideration on um, award for this grant. Any questions or comment? Uh, th through the chair. So I'm assuming it's not going to be next month's meeting, right? There's going to be some time to to review. So it would probably be like maybe one of the last two meetings of the year. Is there a time frame or a timeline or is it just based on kind of how appropriate each one of these uh, each one of these submissions is and whether we think we should be funding? Uh, so I think I understand from the timeline that we had sketched out that the intent would be to have the selection or the evaluation done by the end of this month with the opportunity to be able to present recommendation for the October meeting. Okay, mm -hmm. awesome. So we have approximately four weeks. Well, so far the third. And one additional point of clarification that even after we present it to this commission, and we still need the Board of Supervisors approval. So it will yeah, be the final right. October before everything is finalized. And they just, they're set. Okay. What's the, the question about the, uh, the, the size of the funding source for these projects again? Do we um, have a number on that? Uh, yeah, so um, it's 63,000. 63,000. It's currently in. Okay. So at, at the October meeting, uh, the applicants are going to have an opportunity to come to this meeting and make comments. Uh, but they're also going to, uh, after the commission gives this recommendation to the Board of Supervisors, whenever that is you know, put on the Board of Supervisors agenda, they're also going to have an opportunity, you know, to, you know, to make comment or tell what the recommendation is. Uh, so they're going to be doing the player advocate. You know, so they can make the comments. Any other comments? Uh, there being none, uh, I'm going to open this to the members of the public. I know it's definitely one request. Uh, yeah. So we open it to the members of the public. Oh, you Thank you, Hannah. Uh, Craig, and members of the commission, again, I'm Steve Kennedy, uh, executive uh, producer of the Cannonball Express. I uh, submitted my original proposal in February of 2023. I submitted another proposal via email to the, um, the Cemetery County uh, Parks Department. 
And again, on uh, the day of the deadline, a couple hours before the deadline, August 22nd to Nick Calderon. Uh, so uh, in each one of those steps, uh, I made uh, the proposal clearer and more uh, easy to comprehend. Uh, on the last proposal, I played with the budget a little bit. I did the best I could to pound my uh, square peg into your round hole. Uh, video production funding is a little bit different. The dance is different than your traditional brick and mortar projects. Um, I would be asking for less than 10% of your total uh, monies available. And if I received a notice of intent to provide video production funding from the county supervisor, I could be more specific in terms of who is getting uh, our grant money and how it was being spent. We could get down to brass tacks with a notice of intent to provide video funding. So uh, I cannot provide the name of someone uh, who is responsible for day-to-day -day production of the video because uh, we can't put the cart before the horse. First, uh, I get the money, then I go out and hire this guy. It doesn't work the other way around. No self-respecting uh, video producer director is going to get on board with me until I have money in the bag. So uh, uh, please work with me. Uh, let's work with the county board of supervisors on this trillion, that's trillion with a T dollar issue. And uh, let's move forward. I thank you for your time. Thank you. Any other comments from the public? Uh, I don't see any raised hands in Zoom. Okay, Commission, we have one additional opportunity to say anything on this or we move on to the next item. Any additional comments anybody may have? I look forward to. Here in the proposal next time. Mm -hmm. It's going to be very neat. That being the case, uh, then uh, let's move on. To, uh, next item, which is uh, item number eight, uh, you know, subcommittee updates. So uh, the Fish and Game sub Fund subcommittee, we've got a update on that so we can take that out. Uh, uh, any updates from uh, these committees that I don't think we've really established them. And so the only two committees that exist is the agenda subcommittee and the fish and game subcommittee. And so the agenda subcommittee we have not met. Uh, and so we can't uh, tell you what our, what our plans are for the next few months. Uh, but our plans really don't deviate from item number nine, which we're going to leap into, uh, which provides a list of all the items that we anticipate, you know, discussing in the in the next couple of months. And so, if we could go through that list, and uh, if there's anything that we think we need to include, for instance, in our October meeting or even November meeting, then the commission can tell us we want to. I, I want to, each commissioner can tell, want to have this, want to have this on the agenda. And so kindly go, let's go through all the items, all the six items. And uh, and this is also an opportunity to add another item. Oh, that's great. Are you moving on from eight to nine? Yes. You might want to call for public comment before you move on. Oh, sub maybe updates. I thought it was just for the internal. Um, yeah, but any, in any case, uh, subcommittee updates. Are there any public comments on the subcommittee updates? Check in the box. Yeah. 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 Uh, yes, no, no speaker slips, and I don't see any hands raised. Yeah. Yeah. And so we can move uh, safely mm -hmm. and quietly to <laughs> 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 So item number nine, uh, items for future agenda. Uh, the, through, through the chair, actually one, one that came up that sparked my interest was from the department update. I would love to see some kind of a summary of the Coyote Point survey. Maybe not if next time, the time after. I'd just okay. love to kind of yeah. dive a little bit deeper into some of that and see what people were saying.
Chair Keel, I think you might have you mentioned um, assuming that next month you do a meeting at Tunitas, maybe on the November agenda, you can do a report out. Um, the commission can report out about that meeting and have that as an agenda item. Um, and then the other thing, just to keep on your radar, is um, you know traditionally, I think December, the December meeting is where you set your schedule um, for the following year. Um, schedule of meetings. Your right. schedule of meetings. And then, um, you know, the other thing is that your bylaws contemplate that either at the end of, in the December meeting or or in the, I think that's the January meeting, you would be considering your chair and your positions for the, the next year. I know that that was with with a turnover anticipated on the, on the commission, you might choose to proceed a bit differently on that piece, but right. just to put those on your radar. Thank you. Uh, Chair, I also had an addition for the items for future agenda, which is I'd like to invite um, some of the transit uh, agencies or other personal partner agencies to talk about increasing the baby transit options to our to follow up on that comment. Yeah, I, I like that idea a lot. And it was it was great to have a uh, Sam Trans person on the on the call. So thank you for listening in, Sam Trans. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I think you know that could almost I don't know if that would tie in with like the uh, partnerships and connections. Um, you know, because that could right. be a partnership with you know kind of the public transit arm of the county. So. That could be the sort of thing where we could invite them to come, uh, you know, at some point. I don't know when they could do that. Um, with a presentation on the whole connectivity plan for all the parks. It's also something I know that you know a couple of the open space agencies have also considered. So maybe it doesn't it's one of those things that doesn't make sense for one agency, but might make sense for three or four agencies to try to do together. Yeah. Okay. So this is what I or we currently have, a summary of the Coyote Point survey, uh, a report on Tunitas Creek since we're next meeting, we have in Tunitas, so it's a report back sometime about what that Creek was. Uh, we do, at the end of the year, we do talk about a schedule of meetings. So, uh, you know, schedule for the upcoming year is going to be, upcoming calendar year is going to be. And we also we also need to look at our bylaws, what the bylaws tell us about decisions in terms of mission leadership. And then uh, 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 finally, 9-11 is the 11th one, you know, uh, possibility of inviting transit agencies to begin talking about uh, exploring additional transportation opportunities that are new facilities, that new refurbished facilities are going to need, you know, after we open up. Uh, any other? Uh, I would like for us to uh, talk about uh, the commission report to the Board of Supervisors. Mm -hmm. We've never done such a report. But uh, I would really would like to see that to happen. I see that happen. No, um, so we can collectively talk about it, which meaning as to what we may, if we want to include that report, and even specifically what what time, uh, what agenda of the board of supervisors. And hopefully, we'll be advised as to how long we have to. <laughs> We, 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 you know, well, uh, how much time in advance we need to give the board of supervisors, you know, the coming thing. So, what do the board of supervisors talk about? So 
we can definitely take out item number nine two since uh, the budget yeah. update presentation has 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 has, has, has been completed. Uh, the hundred year anniversary multimedia presentation that is history since we already celebrated the uh, memorial mm -hmm. memorial day uh hundred year anniversary so that is that is you know uh, certainly out. And uh, uh, we we wanted to receive on a sort of a regular basis few reduction project updates. So you know that's something to probably the agenda committee needs to look at in terms of uh, you know, well, how, 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 how soon we should, we should we should schedule we should schedule that. Right? Um, okay. So uh, any other additions before we open it up to members of the public? Any other comments? It's just one other one other comment. Since I haven't seen you guys since I came back from some travels this summer, I I, I got to explore uh, Scandinavia mm -hmm. in the month of July, mm -hmm. and uh, haven't been. Go, oh, it's amazing. Um, but there were many cities that we visited that had this um, just amazing bicycle infrastructure. Mm -hmm. um, Copenhagen. For example, um, they have dedicated lanes uh, for bicycles that are physically separated from where cars would go. Mm -hmm. And bicycles really feel like they ha are top dog mm -hmm. out there. And then they have sidewalks for pedestrians also separate. Uh, so seeing that uh, really, I think, serves as like gold standard uh, for bicycle access. And you guys know me well enough now, you know, to know that I'm always looking for alternatives to cars. Um, so anything we can do to get better public transit with buses, thumbs up. Anything we can do to support bicycle infrastructure to get people riding their bicycles more is fantastic. So kind of in keeping with our discussion, you know, from public transit um, groups, I know there's always thought about bicycle lanes and protected bicycle routes. Um, but I wonder if there could be some sort of a placeholder for future discussions around bicycle transit in the county and ways to continue to support that. I don't know how that best fits in. And I know that cities are also doing their own plans. So it's kind of an integrated, you know, thought process. Uh, good comment. I think I would like to suggest that, uh, you know, uh, uh, our department does not do bike lane transportation. It's a department in the county, which is most probably public works, I think. It might be Office of Sustainability, actually. Office of Sustainability. Yeah. And so uh, invite somebody from that office you know, give us some ideas what's happening countywide. Right. And they're probably they're probably gonna be very knowledgeable about what, what's happening in the individual cities right. within right. San Mateo County and whether there's a desire to you know have this interconnectedness. Yes. So I think that would be a good first step. Okay. You that know, seems nice. You know, so invite somebody from the Office of Sustainability regarding mobility from the county. Well I I I, I agree with that comment and, and we there is, you know, an active transportation plan for the county, so they could be part of that conversation about public transit because theoretically, even if we don't have bike lanes in the parks, if you can get bike to people to the shuttle pick up, <laughs> right, 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 right. they can get the shuttle, then then it helps us. So again, it's part of an integrated so then then conversation. Let, yeah, so then let's include that in that discussion. Let's make sure it's included within that discussion mm -hmm. when we get the transit agencies. Through the chair, if there is interest, yeah, I mean, we have regional trails, like portions of regional trails through some of the parks that, you know, tie in to, I mean, the Bay Trail. Mm -hmm. um, right. You, uh, so, Camp, you know, Crystal Springs Regional Trail, um, you know, provide bicycle corridors. You know, it's not, those are existing. Um, mm -hmm. I know with the Bay Trail, there's like gaps. Right, um, right, things like that. But there are regional trail efforts, things like that, that help um, create those bicycle route connections. Oh, yeah, no, they, I mean, they, they, they play a huge role. Like, for example, the, the Ralston bike path, you know, in Belmont, which goes from you know, Ralston over Highway 280 down to Kenyatta. That's like a, I think we manage that, right? Yeah. You know, the land is owned by pg &E underneath. Yeah. And so that's like one of those examples of like, that's a phenomenal connector. You know, and so so just the the thought and discussion around integrating all that, um, you know, any way that we can support that or contribute to that, I think is meaningful because it seems like we have 
lots of groups, and I'm sure there's lots of work in the background that I'm not even aware of, but there's just so many groups working on individual independent projects. You've got a city project here, you've got a county project there. There's some way to integrate it, you know, for like a master plan. Maybe it already exists, I don't know. But it'd be fun to bring in a group like that to hear. Right, right. Would we fold that into the discussion of 9.5? You know, yeah, there's a mention of the Office of Size Turnability being, you know, a primary key player. Okay, so any any additional comments prior to us opening that up to the members of open to public comment? Yeah. Okay. Uh, we up. have one hand raised in Zoom uh, for Bernat Silveri. Uh, Burnett, you should be able to unmute and. Yeah, Burnett Silvera. <laughs> Uh, in uh, previous meetings, uh, the commissioners had discussed about uh, addressing some repeating concerns by the public and making some decisions on those. Uh, for example, the flooding at uh, Quarry Park, the, uh, it was raised that maybe asking or bringing in the public work to see what they may be able to do about it was something that was raised. Uh, I don't know if you want to make that an agenda item, but you did seem to think that there was a significant number of repeating concerns that are being raised that are not being addressed back to the public that you wanted to address. Uh, so it would be great if that was made an agenda item and some of those things could be sort of uh, determined and some feedback given to the uh, public so we know where you stand on these things. Thank you. Yeah, thank you all for reminding us of that. It crossed my mind, but I kept on forgetting about putting it here. So it's a, it's a good suggestion. And so we're going to include it as uh, 9.13. And the agenda committee is going to give it uh, you know, the priority it deserves. Thank you so much. Uh, any other comments? Uh, no other uh, hands raised in Zoom. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to uh, actually add an item, sorry, you know, uh, we need to talk about recording of our meetings. Uh, we need to talk about particularly recording of the meetings when we go, when we, when we have a, when we have a box and phone and so forth. And we had also mentioned that I think at a previous meeting about, you know, just uh, amplification. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and, and I think there's a meeting that we went to where, you know, a lot of people, you know, and, you know, you know, really be sure we could hear them sometimes and I'm sure they could not hear us sometimes. So just, just the mechanics of, you know, having, you know, these meetings, uh, you know, in various parts of the county. Uh, how do we manage you know the recording you know, the and so on? I'd really like to add that the discussion I have. Yeah, that, that would also the chair, I think that would also be a good one as we're thinking about next year's schedule as well. Yes. Right. Yeah. And you know, we've been doing a lot of parks, but maybe there are other like community centers and other places right. where we might be able to. I mean, they're less fun than, than going and bark, but uh, but there might be other places too where we where we might be able to kind of improve that or just improve it within within the parks themselves and be able to afford it. Okay. Um, there being no other comment, uh, uh, we can move on to the next item, uh, which is going to take a lot of discussion. <laughs> uh, there being no other items, meeting is adjourned. Great.